Hello folks, welcome to Claude's Bible Moments. My name is Claude Roy. So nice that you guys are watching my videos. It would be awesome if you would subscribe, press that little notification button and the thumbs up. So we are continuing on with uh, the Beatitudes. Today will be part two. So we're just going to go from uh, Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 20. Jesus teaching about salt and light let me get myself ready here you are the salt of the earth but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor can you make it salty again it will be thrown out and trampled trampled underfoot as worthless you are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden no one can no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Makes sense. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Teaching about the law. Don't misunderstand why I have, I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappears, not even the smallest detail of God's law will disappear until its purpose is achieved. So if you ignore the least commandment and teach others to do the same, you will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But anyone who obeys God's laws and teaches them will be given will be called great in the kingdom of heaven but i warn you unless your righteousness is better than the righteousness of the teachers of of religious law and the pharisees you will never enter the kingdom of heaven that's quite the mouthful ladies and gentlemen jesus starts off you are the salt of the earth as Christians, we are rep representative of Jesus Christ here on earth. We should live and act like it. I should live and act like it too. I don't know if salt or any other seasoning has an expiration date, but according to Jesus, it does. We should have a sense of urgency to reach out to the people around us who are lost without Christ. Jesus said, but what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Well, it has no value if we don't make an effort to affect the world around us, in a sense, you know. As Christians, we should not blend in with everyone else. What I mean by that is that people should look at us differently. Not as they perceive us to be or pointing the finger, telling them how wrong they are. Or beating them over the head with a Bible. Instead, we should affect others positively. Just as seasoning brings out the best flavor in food. Jesus also says, you are the light of the world. Can you hide a city that is sitting on top of a mountain? No. Its light at night can be seen for miles. Jerusalem was built on a mountain. Back then, they had lamps and you know oil lamps and stuff like that. So they... Kind of could have seen it from afar, but now in 2023, you know, like with all the surrounding, but you can still see Jerusalem very well. If we live for Christ, we will glow like lights, showing others that Christ, what Christ is like. Through be, truth be known, we hide our lights by one, being quiet when we should speak. Two, going along with the crowd three denying the light four letting sin dim our light and five not explaining our lights to others and six ignoring ignoring the needs of others we should be beacons of truth don't shut your light off from the rest of the world god's moral and ceremonial laws were given to help people to love God with all their hearts and mind. Throughout Israel's history, 
However, these laws had often been misquoted and misapplied. By Jesus' time, religious leaders had turned the law into a confusing mass of rules. 613 of them. Imagine, it would just... I can't just... I can't wrap myself, my head around that. And the people back then must have been so frustrating, but they were kind of getting used to it and they just went along. When Jesus talked about a new way to understand God's law, he was actually trying to bring people to its original purpose. Jesus did not speak against the law itself, but against the abuse and excess to which it had been subjected. If Jesus did not come to abolish the law, does that mean that all the Old Testament law still applies to us today? Yeah. In the Old Testament, there were three categories of law. Ceremonial, civil, and moral. The first one, the ceremonial law, related specifically to Israel's worship. Its primary purpose was to point forward to Jesus Christ. These laws, therefore, were no longer necessary after Jesus' death and resurrection. While we are no longer bound by ceremonial laws, the principle behind them to worship and to love the holy God still applies. Jesus was often accused by the Pharisees of violating, violating ceremonial laws. The second one, the civil law, applies to daily living in Israel. Because modern society and culture are so radically different from what time that from that time and setting, all of these guidelines cannot be followed specifically. But the principle, principle behind the commands are timeless and should guide our conduct. Jesus demonstrated these principle by example. The moral law, the Ten Commandments, is a direct command of God. And it requires strict obedience. The moral law reveals the nature and will of God. And it still applies today. Jesus obeyed the moral law completely, perfectly. Some of those in the crowds were expert at telling others what to do. And it's sad to say that some people sometimes are doing the same today. But they missed the central point of God's law themselves. Jesus made it clear, however, that obeying God's law is more important than explaining them. It's much easier to study God's law and tell others to obey them than to put them in practice. How are you doing at obeying God yourself? The Pharisees were scrupulous in their attempt to follow their, these laws. So how could Jesus reasonably call us to greater righteousness than theirs? The Pharisees' weakness was that they were content to obey the law outwardly without allowing God to change their hearts or attitude. They looked pious, but they were far from the kingdom of heaven. God judges our hearts as well as our deeds. For it is in the heart, in the heart, that our real allegiance lies. Jesus was saying that his listeners needed a different kind of righteousness altogether, not just a more intense version of the Pharisees' obedience, which was a legal compliance. Our righteousness must come from what God does in us, not what we can do by ourselves. Be God-centered, not self-centered. Be based on reverence for God not approval from people, and go beyond keeping the law to living by the principle behind the law. We should be just as concerned about our attitudes that people don't see as about our actions that are seen by all. As I was reading this, I just want to sum it up, sum it all up, that Jesus says that we should be the light of the world saying that people, when they look at us, they should see a difference in our life. They should say, there's something different about you and I want to know it. I want to know about it. 
And then that's when we get the opportunity to tell them about Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the blame for breaking the law for us. Now we have to accept what he has done for us and he will give us the strength to live a righteous life. He will give us the strength to follow the Ten Commandments. But as I finish and as I close here, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, it's as easy as a simple prayer. I'm going to say the prayer and whenever you watch this video, you can repeat it. You can receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior on your own, wherever you're at. It's simple and it's just like this. Lord Jesus, today I give you my life. I repent of my sins. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I thank you for you, that you have died on the cross for my sins. And I am my sins is washed as white as snow. And I'm completely clean because of what you have done for me on the cross. I receive you today as my Savior. I make a decision today to follow you. And I thank you for what you have done for me. In Jesus' name, I pray. So, if you have prayed this, I just want to welcome you into the family of God. And it's the best decision you've ever made in all your life. So, thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for being so patient. Again, I want to emphasize that it would be awesome if you would subscribe, press the notification button, and give me a thumbs up. So, until next time, my name is Claude Roy. And God bless. Bye-bye.